Molly Martins Corbett and her father, Tom Martins, have accepted a plea deal of voluntary manslaughter in return for the district attorney dropping murder charges in the case of Jason Corbett. I'm joined on the line now by Ralph Regal, Southern correspondent for the Irish Independent, who's in South Carolina. Ralph, good morning. Good morning, Pat. Now, uh, we've uh, followed this narrative for a long time now, but effectively um, they have accepted, oh, I suppose, all the time that they did kill Jason Corbett, and now they're kind of having caveats about the nature of that killing. Yeah, very much so, Pat. Um, the second degree murder charge was dropped as part of a plea bargain arrangement. Um, Alan Martin, the assistant district attorney for Davidson County, outlined that before Judge David Hall yesterday morning. Uh, under the terms of it, Tom Martin has pleaded guilty to what's described as a Class D manslaughter um, offence here that, that, that ranks as voluntary manslaughter. Now, what does that His mean, daughter, voluntary manslaughter? A voluntary manslaughter would be one of the lower um, classes of manslaughter. Um, now, having said that, um, it, the, the sentencing can range from as little as parole in, in a case where there are extraordinary mitigating circumstances, right up to almost 17 years. Now, the judge was at pains to say yesterday that um, only repeat offenders with long criminal histories would qualify for a sentence of the order of 17 years. And he said, look, that does not apply in either the case of Tom Martins or Molly Martins, neither of whom have, have previous convictions. Uh, in the case of Molly Martins, she entered what was described as a no contest um, plea. And the judge pointed out to her that the state or the prosecutors will consider a no contest plea to be a form of a guilty plea. Before those and again, is that be- a guilty plea to voluntary manslaughter? To voluntary manslaughter, exactly. And, now, and now just to clarify, both, you'd imagine that uh, involuntary manslaughter would be where someone dies as a result of a traffic accident and the person who's driving the car did not intend to kill them, but perhaps through carelessness ended up uh, killing them and that would maybe involuntary. But voluntary means, I suppose, knowing what they were doing. Yes, or going too far or being reckless as to the consequences of their actions. And that's really the nub of this case in terms of the extreme levels of violence that were used against Mr. Corbett. Now, both Tom and Molly Martins and their defence teams, which include Douglas Kingsbury, Jay Vanoy and Jones Bird, they have said that both acted entirely in self-defence. Mr. Martin's legal team said he accepted that in the extraordinary circumstances of what happened, he went too far. And that's why he has pleaded to voluntary manslaughter. Um, But they're setting out what they're describing as a a large number of mitigating circumstances um, to explain what had happened on the night. Again, for listeners that that, that may be not be familiar with the case, and I'm aware as well of of the early hour of the morning, but there was extraordinary um, violence used against Mr. Corbett, who was a 39-year-old Irish widower, father of two, who had married Molly Martins. And when she had travelled to work in Ireland as a nanny for his two young children, of course, his first wife died uh, from an asthma attack in Nimerick. But Mr. Corbett was discovered um, around 3 a.m. in the early hours of August the 2nd, 2015, um, with appalling head injuries, um, head injuries that were so extensive that the pathologist, Dr. Craig Nelson, could not accurately count the number of blows that were inflicted with a metal Louisville slugger baseball bat and with a large concrete paving slab that somehow had been on Molly Martin's bedside table. Now, while both Tom and Molly Martins have said that they acted entirely in self-defense, and Mr. Martin said that he heard a noise upstairs. He was in the guest bedroom downstairs with his wife, Sharon. When he went up to investigate, he said he saw his Irish son-in-law effectively strangling or holding his daughter by the neck. And he intervened to protect her and then to protect himself. But both were found totally uninjured at the scene. Now, again, that's going to be one of the central arguments over the next couple of days about whether they were in uninjured, as the police and the state has, has argued, and the general circumstances of how Mr. Corbett came to suffer his fatal injuries. So uh, he was battered to death and they were uninjured, even though allegedly they say they were doing it in self-defence. It, it doesn't add up to us, uh, but then... We're kind of on the Corbett family side in this one, naturally being Irish people. However, the nastiest bit of all of this is that uh, Molly Martins is contending that she doesn't believe that Jason Corbett's first wife 
died of natural causes. She had an asthma attack and died. She believes or says that she believed at the time that Jason Corbett had killed his first wife. Yeah, and it goes even farther than that, Pat, in that her solicitor, Douglas Kingsbury, has said that they will enter evidence as regards the circumstances of the death in November 2006 of Mr. Corbett's first wife. Now, again, that's going to be a major issue, I think, in this sentencing hearing. And I think what is important is is not so much what Mr. Kingsbury said yesterday, but what he didn't say. He did not say that um, uh, Jason Corbett's first wife was actually with her sister when the asthma attack happened. He did not say that Jason Corbett, um, in a desperate attempt to save his wife, had put her in his car and driven towards an ambulance that was coming to their aid from University Hospital Limerick. And he, it also did not say that Jason had actually revived his wife in the car when she had succumbed to the asthma attack and that she actually died in the in the ambulance as she was being brought well, to UL. Will that H- correct narrative be introduced in the sentencing hearing? Because you wouldn't again, want lies to be told and gotten away with. Yeah, again, we, we don't know, Pat. It's going to be very interesting to see what the stance the prosecution takes to this. Alan Martin is the assistant district attorney and it will really fall to him to set the, the state narrative of what they say happened. Interestingly, if you look at the whole argument about self-defence and the argument about the injuries that were sustained in the original 2017 trial, there were some very, very interesting facts that were put forward. For instance, um, a, a blood spatter expert, Dr. Stuart James, he said that the first blow was actually inflicted on Mr. Corbett as he was in bed and most likely asleep. Secondly, that he was struck even after he was lying dead on the floor. And thirdly, that paramedics, when they attended the property um, at Panther Creek Court, they commented on the fact that Mr. Corbett was cold to the touch, despite the fact that they had been told they were called immediately after the incident concluded. And the suggestion and statement made by the prosecution six years ago was that Tom and Molly Martins had deliberately delayed calling the emergency services to ensure that Mr. Corbett was dead when they arrived. And and finally, Ralph, the reason for this plea bargain uh, affair is presumably to save the state some cash. Yeah, we've not been told, Pat, but I mean, the reality is that in in, in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, there's a significant backlog of um, murder cases here in North Carolina, given the homicide rate in North Carolina, that list is only going to get longer. And I think the reality of this retrial is that it was always going to, there's significantly more evidence was likely to be introduced in the retrial than there was in the original trial in 2017. The original trial lasted for almost five weeks. The suggestion was that this retrial trial could actually last between six and eight weeks and no doubt that was definitely a factor I think in the calculations as the prosecution opened plea bargain and negotiations with the defence teams. Ralph Regal, Southern Correspondent for the Irish Independent who is currently in South Carolina. Thank you very much for joining us Ralph.